Wait till you hear more. In 2014, Barack Obama, the 44th President of the United States, warned that America must be ready because who knows if five years from now a new virus like the Spanish flu pops up. Watch this. There may and likely will come a time in which we have both an airborne disease that is deadly. So that if and when a new strain of flu like the Spanish flu crops up, five years from now or a decade from now, we've made the investment. What will you call it? Coincidence? Farsightedness? Or did America have an inkling of what was cooking in China? Here is 2018, the Wuhan Virology Laboratory releases another paper saying villagers residing near Yunnan's bat caves carried antibodies to the bat coronavirus. This indicates the possibility of transmission to humans. Then came 2019. In the month of November, three employees at this lab fell sick. At least this is what the US intelligence claims. They say three workers sought hospital care with symptoms consistent with both COVID-19 and a common seasonal illness. The very next month, in December 2019, a novel coronavirus was detected in two patients at a Wuhan hospital. The samples were sent to Dr. Shi Zhengli, China's bat woman, the director of the Wuhan Virology Lab. Dr. Shi's team found that the virus circulating in Wuhan was a 96.2% match of the virus they had been studying at the lab. And despite knowing all of this, China did not take any proactive measures. Instead, on the 3rd of January, when the cases grew into a cluster, China's National Health Commission ordered all institutions to not publish any information about the sickness. Those who did were silenced. Like Dr. Li Wenliang, an ophthalmologist at the Wuhan Central Hospital. He sent out warnings on a closed WeChat group informing his colleagues about the severity of this virus, but he was censured by the hospital's authorities, summoned by the Public Safety Bureau in Wuhan and forced to sign a statement of apology for spreading rumors and disrupting public order. What followed was more disinformation, more cover-ups and more disappearances. A total of 5,100 people were either arrested or labelled sick so that they could be placed in quarantine. We called it the Wuhan virus so that the world does not forget China's culpability. But the World Health Organization said that we must not characterise or profile the virus because there is no blame in this and all evidence points to a natural origin, exact words spoken. Around the same time, The Lancet, said to be one of the most respected and influential medical journals, published a statement that roundly rejected the lab leak hypothesis. Everyone else followed suit. And this pretty much ended the scientific debate around it. It took the world 18 months, countless mutations, 3.6 million deaths and 171 million plus cases to give the lab leak hypothesis a second look. 18 months, that's the kind of time that China was given to erase all evidence. In July last year, there were floods in Wuhan. Most of the reports pointed at the floods being man-made. Chinese activists like Jennifer Zheng claimed that this move was undertaken intentionally so that China could purge all evidence. This too was labeled as far-fetched. We need to come to terms with who we are dealing with. China is a country that has been an incubator of new diseases for decades. The Asian flu in 1956, the H5N1 bird flu in 1997, the SARS epidemic in 2002 and now the Wuhan virus. I'm not suggesting that these diseases were purposely spread, but China is known to carry out research on making naturally occurring viruses deadlier to increase their transmissibility and virality. Do you know how many animal samples have been tested to see if they were the source? 80,000 samples from 30 species. They come from farm and wild animals in China. How many of them have tested positive as a source? Zero. Yes, the genetic sequence of this virus shows no evidence of manipulation so far, but scientific journals also say that there are methods which allow scientists to modify viral sequences without leaving a trace. And this includes cutting the genome into fragments that can later come together through natural recombination. There are so many scenarios compatible with the lab leak theory that it leaves one wondering, what have we been doing all this while?
We dismiss the lab scenario as a conspiracy of the ultra-right. We dismiss citizen journalists reporting on it as amateur sleuths. And we dismiss those raising questions as xenophobic. So let me say this. China may have caused a pandemic it intended to prevent. Or it may have created a virus it intended to spread. But it definitely has a role to play and we need to find out what that role was. Because there's no guarantee that this pandemic will be the last.